All right, guys. So obviously today we are going to be opening some battle boxes. I have five battle boxes. We're going to open them all up, see what's inside, and uh, try some stuff out. Let's start with this one. That's the smallest. Let's get it out of the way. All right, let's see what we got in here. Okay, we got a can of something. Axe wax. Beware of imitations, it says. Made in Oregon. Apply to warm wood, metal, or leather. This handmade wax blend contains only the finest all-natural food-safe ingredients. Food-safe. So what is this? I guess it's just like... Yeah, it's just like some type of... Some type of wax you put on your axe handle. And I guess it protects it in some way. So that's pretty, pretty neat. Hiker Medic. Not sure what that is. A book. Mountain Bonded. Interesting. I'm, a, I'm betting this is some type of knife. And this, probably some type of knife or something. So let's... Oh. Oh, <laughs> I thought that was how you opened it. The, the glue came off. Oh, you open it this way. Okay. And it is a knife that seems to be covered in oil. No chance of this thing rusting. Let's wipe this down. Oh, it has a plastic coating. Comes with a nice little Kydex sheath. It's really heavy. So this comes with a screwdriver. What is this? It's got a hole that's threaded. It's got like a big, like a big end here. My first thought is that it's like some type of like, like chisel that you would hit and like chisel something out with. Feels pretty sharp. It's got a, it's got a gut hook on it. Maybe the book says something. Okay, so this thing, it just says that this is like a, just a universal tool, essentially. Uh, it's not a chisel. It says that you can use it as a, a scanner, hatchet, hammer, and ripper, or gut hook. Uh, so I guess it's just a strange multi-use blade of some type. I've never skinned an animal, uh, so I'm sure this, the shape or something would come in handy in some way. So that's interesting. Let's go ahead and use this knife. Let's open this up. That's sharp. I think this is just a basic, I guess not basic because it's actually pretty big, but I think it's just a fire steel. 50 millimeter ruler on one side. It has a little bottle opener on it. Oh, that's actually, I think this is one of the better fire steels that I've ever seen. The cord's a little, a little rough. Oh yeah, you can really do something with that. Which, that reminds me, I am planning to do a three-day survival video after I hit one million subscribers. And I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna do it using uh, Battle Box stuff. So, if you wanna see that, make sure you're subscribed. All right, now, Hiker Medic. It just says Med Packs. I assume this is gonna be like a, just some type of a generic like Med Pack of some type. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is obviously something you would put like inside of a hiking bag. Just for, you know, just in case. Spare blanket. Oh, this is gonna be one of those like Mylar blankets. Those are, I've, sh I've showcased these, this type of blanket many, many times. Probably five or six times throughout the channel. These things work great. Some paracord. You can never, never go wrong with having paracord. A whistle. So I guess if you get lost. That is a good whistle. Some of these cheap little whistles like this are garbage. That is, that is loud and that is good. Looks like you got some gauze, some sting relief, some alcohol pads. This looks like a nice little little kit for how small it is. Put this right inside of a, a backpack. I don't know what this is. I can smell it. I assume some type of natural energy mood booster and electrolytes. 
So this is just like a little uh, like drink mix packet. Let's see, you got two grams of sugar, not bad. Three grams of carbs, 50 milligrams of caffeine. I'm trying to see how much salt there is in here. Cause it should have salt. Oh, thousand milligrams of salt. If you're dehydrated, that'll do the trick. One of these hot sauce packets. What is that? What is this? Oh, <laughs> sunscreen. Burn relief, bandages. It's a pretty good little kit. I like that. Next, we got this, which is, I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be some type of sharp object of something. Huh? Okay, there's four of these and one of these. I'm no genius, but I'm gonna assume that these line up together. Okay. And this. I'm gonna, before I look in the book, I'm gonna assume that it's some type of cooking stove. That's just my guess. And I'm right. It is a cooking stove. So you have a hole here. This is where you feed in your uh, twigs and whatnot. And then you put that there, your heat comes up, and you cook. And it breaks down into something really thin. Oh. I felt like there was something in there. Oh, I bet they go there. And then you go there. Or maybe not. That doesn't really make much sense. Anyway, it's a stove. And it breaks down really flat. So it would be really nice to put like in a backpack or something. It doesn't have a very big footprint. All right, guys. So before we go any farther, this video is sponsored by AirUp. So AirUp, if you don't know, is a revolutionary water bottle that flavors your water with scent. And I'm going to show you how it works. It's very simple. So just take the top off. Of course, you just fill the bottle up with water. And now once your bottle is filled up, you just pick a scent. They have, Arab has all kinds of scents. We are gonna go with cherry. Now each packet comes with three scent pods and each scent pod can flavor 1.3 gallons of water. So you just take the scent pod, open it up, so once you get your pot out, here's how it works. The pot has a little teardrop shape and the straw has a little teardrop shape. You just match those up, push it on there, and you have to kind of pull it up just a little bit. And now whenever you drink your water, the water is going to be aerated through the pod and then the scent is going to be added to the water and you'll, you will taste whatever flavor you have. Like I said, in this case, cherry. And you can hear it bubble whenever you drink. That's how you know it's lined up. And then your water tastes like whatever uh, whatever scent you choose. So if you're interested, they have this all new steel bottle. They also have just classic plastic bottles. And that's not all. So for the month of March, if you buy any starter kit and you use code FREEFAVE5, you will get a free five pod variety pack. And in that pack, you will get wild berry, orange vanilla swirl, peach, watermelon, and raspberry lemon. If you are interested, all of the links will be in the description. Next one, let's go. I don't know why this one is like regular cardboard and all the other ones are white. Let's go with this one. Okay, we got a decent amount of stuff. I'm going to assume that that's probably a knife. Everglow light tube. Sounds interesting. Oh, look at this. This is actually exciting. I, I was gonna do a video about uh, one of these one time, like a few years ago. This is the Zippo, uh, like ax saw combination thing. I was gonna do a video about one of these and I don't remember what happened. They like quit making them or were out of stock or something. And for whatever reason, I couldn't get my hands on it. So that's cool. And then we got a Fisher space pen. That is pretty cool. Paper, zips, and a utility clip for whatever that's for. All right, let's take a look at this first. We can't, because it's taped. Okay, fine, Maybe let's take a look at this. Actually, I don't need to open that now. All right, is it a knife? Of course it is. And it's packaged up like a gift. It's a very nice sheath. It's a very nice knife. Wow, feels good. It doesn't feel incredibly sharp. I like that. That's a good size blade. 
Feels good. It's got a nice sheath. Another nice knife. Let's get. There's so many things. I don't know which way to. I don't know which way to go. The Utila clip. I assume this is for like connecting gear to like a bag or something. Okay, so this is. It says beltless carry. So I assume that you would just. Ow. I assume you would just take this little hook right here and like put it on the. I guess your waistband, and then. And then you have these holes where you'd mount something. So that could be. That could be useful if that's something that you need. Let's open this. Oh, I see. So the blade comes out as part of that. This thing almost doesn't even look like a it looks almost like a tomahawk or something with like the, the shape of the blade. I bet you could really, really cut some stuff with that. Maybe I'll have to do a, a second channel video thoroughly testing this thing out. So I guess you put that back in there. And that back in there. And then you go, have it right here, and now you have a saw. All right, let's see, Everglow light tube. Let's see what that's about. Sounds very intriguing. Huh? What? Lightweight and flexible design offers a variety of lighting options. White LED with dimmer switch to easily control the intensity of the light. Inflatable camp lantern. So what, you blow it up? I guess I need like a USB something. All right, I have a battery bank, which is what I assume you would use this with. Interesting. So then I'm assuming you just blow it up there. Okay. So it's kind of like a tube light. Let's turn off the lights, plug this thing in, see what it's about. All right, now that it's dark, <laughs> let's see. I feeling it. Oh no. I think we have a problem. Wait a minute. Why is it not working now? Oh, now you want to work. Okay. Now watch it not work, guaranteed. Ah, there we go. That's as bright as it goes. So you could have this running off of like a battery pack or something. That's fairly, it's fairly decent light. Especially if you had it like in a tent or something. And you can dim it. All the way down to there. That's still pretty bright. I like that. I think that's pretty cool. And it's also collapsible. And we should just be able to And it should just go back into the bag. All right, next what we got zips. Z-zips, technically, there's two Z's. I don't know if they don't know how to spell or what. I guess there's only, there's only two of them. I'm gonna assume that it's exactly as you would imagine. It's like a, a thing so you can zip tie a cut or a giant open wound. Let's just pretend I had an open wound from there to there. Like I had a giant cut right there. I had one right there years ago. I bet this is gonna suck to take off. It's probably gonna peel off all my hair. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have done, maybe I should have done this where I could use my hands. Oh, that doesn't even really stick to hair that much. It tries to peel right off. Was I doing that wrong? Okay, these things are not very sticky. I don't know if I like these things that well. They're not that sticky. In a situation where, say I, say my arm was cut, I mean, there's gonna be blood everywhere, there might be dirt, and if it's, it's not even sticking to a perfectly clean arm. So, let's try again. You're, supposed to, you're not supposed to pull the tabs, you're supposed to pull the little, the other pieces. Right there, right there. I mean, if that was an open wound, that would would close it, I guess. Be better than nothing. Other than the fact it doesn't really <laughs> doesn't really stick. Next, we have the Fisher Space Pen. It says it writes upside down at any angle, extreme temperatures, underwater, three times longer life than the average pen. I've seen videos on these before, like years ago, and I think you gotta have like special paper to write underwater. What do we do here? Oh, oh, it's a clickable pen. Let's see. 
Does it write upside down? It does. I also think any any pen can write upside down. It feels kind of cheap, to be completely honest. And to me, it doesn't really feel any different than just a regular pen. It just feels completely normal. I guess it's worth it. I'm just gonna assume that it'll do the stuff it says it's gonna do. If you guys wanna see it, maybe I'll do a, a test on the second channel. All right, moving right along. Let's put the, let's get the heavy one. Typically, heavy means uh, good. So let's see what we got. Oh, I think we got some goodies in here. All right, so let's start off with this. Oh, Moki doorstep. Okay, maybe that's not so good. Candle lantern, Rhino, tire pressure gauge, motorcycle tie-down set, rechargeable batteries. Looks like some Velcro tie-down straps. Pod, power on demand. Pod X, whatever that is. This, whatever that is, which I almost guarantee that's a knife. What's this? These are just ratchet, uh, ratchet straps. Heavy duty ones too. That is, that is some heavy duty, heavy duty ratchet straps. I like that. Yeah, that feels, that feels good. I don't know, like little, I don't know what you'd use these for, like little extension pieces or something. Maybe if you had to wrap, like wrap it around something, just heavy duty ratchet straps. I wonder what they're rated for, because it looks like a lot, to be honest. The maximum working load is 1,736 pounds, and the braking strength is 5,200 pounds. That is significant. That's pretty cool. I feel like this box is, like, loaded. Let's take a look at this pod. What's up? This power pod. Nice. <laughs> Does it do anything? So apparently it uses three AAA batteries that are not included. But luckily we got AAA batteries right here. I don't want to leave those in there. Okay, I'll just leave them there long enough to, to show this. <clears throat> okay, so I guess it's supposed to be like some type of like warning light or something. It has a magnet on it. So I guess you could, I don't know, stick it to your car or something? Put it on top of your car? Like you're, pretend like you're like chasing somebody down or something? What else we got? Just on? Oh, we got a little flashlight. I don't feel like that's gonna do a whole lot, but it'd be better than nothing. I guess it'd be useful for, useful for something. All right, let's check out this. The Yuko, the original candle lantern. That should be interesting. A candle lantern. Is it really just... It's really just a candle. Oh. Oh. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Gotcha. Oh, it does, okay. I was gonna say, how are you supposed to see out of this thing if it's closed up like this? Because like, that just didn't make any sense. But it goes like this. That makes more sense. So I guess you just light it. So let's light this thing and then let's turn the lights off. See how much of a, see how much of a lantern this thing really is. Oh. Video reviews by Candlelight. This actually puts off quite a bit of heat. Ooh. It's a windproof too. Well, maybe not windproof, but man, that puts off a pretty good amount of light. Not bad. And then whenever you're done, you should, should be able to maybe just blow it out to the top. Oh, nice, but... Ooh! Ow! Ow! Why is that so hot? That was way hotter than I thought. Oh, well now it says it's only 120 degrees. 
It was definitely more than that when I just touched it. You know what, let's put that right here. Just in case the power ever goes out, we'll film videos with that thing. Open this one, because I know that this is a knife, for sure. What do you know? A knife. You know, something tells me... I feel like I already have this exact knife somewhere from one of these boxes before. It's got a nice, like, Damascus blade. Although, I don't know if it's a real Damascus, or if it's just, like, etched. Very nice and sharp. I mean, very... Very sharp. <laughs> very sharp. Motorcycle tie-down set. That seems very useful. So what is this, just ratchet straps for motorcycles? I guess it comes in a bag, Rhino USA. Oh, I see. These are like, these are those, these don't have ratchets. These are the type of straps that you just kind of pull and then they just kind of like bite. And it also has this, which I would assume you would kind of kind of like go like this around like the handlebars, and then you could just just go like this and just kind of like pull them tight. Interesting. And they have a carrying bag. You can just throw them in. That's nice. I like that. Tire pressure gauge, zero to seventy-five psi, heavy duty. Another bag. Oh, huh. is that literally all it is? It's just a tire pressure gauge? Jeez, Rhino sends so much stickers with all their stuff. They want you to put their stickers everywhere. I mean, that's a nice gauge. That is braided, a little uh, relief valve thing. I really like that. I have, a, I have a tire down here. Let me see if I can get a reading real quick. Looks like we're about uh, 25 PSI, and then you push this, and it just releases it. Pretty cool. And last but not least, the Moki doorstep. Easy access to vehicle's roof. Wow, this thing is giant. Now, you're supposed to use this You can kind of see it here. You can see you're supposed to put this on the door latch and then use it to step up and get on, get up to your roof or whatever. Now, I'm sure that this thing works great and I'm sure you can do that, but I do not like that. <laughs> I don't think that you should be putting that much pressure on your door latch. I think that's a recipe for disaster. And it also doesn't work on all styles of door latches. You have to have the right style. I'm gonna go look I don't even think I have anything with the style of door latch that this requires. So, it turns out I do not have the right style of door latch to test this out. I'm sure it wor would work fine. Um, I'm sure it works as it's designed. I personally just am not a big fan of <laughs> putting that much weight on a door latch. But, if you want to, go ahead. Next, let's cover this box. This one is very actually light for its size, which kind of has me a little bit concerned. It makes me feel like there's not anything really good in here. I don't know, so this is, this is why it's so big. So it has a sleeping bag. I don't think there's even anything special about this. It's a three season synthetic mummy sleeping bag with plenty of room for comfort. I would open this up but really, what's the point? You guys have all seen a sleeping bag. You know what sleeping bags look like. So let's just avoid that monstrosity and go on to something better. Oh, Spider Co. Spider Co. Which Spider Co? Ooh. I really like Spider Co. I've carried a Spider Co Tenacious for years. I don't even know what this is. Resilience. Ew. Half serrated blade? I hate serrated blades. Especially half serrations. This thing is giant. <laughs> like it's like almost too big to, to be like an everyday carry. Alright, anyway. Spider Co. You can never go wrong. And then we got a, a ton of camo stuff. 
Like what? what is this? A camo chamois sponge, okay? Kitchen chamois, field chamois. So this is all just like chamois, which if you don't know is like, oh, this is a sponge. So like, I guess for doing dishes or something. And this is a field chamois. Yeah, so this is just like a sham wow, but just camouflage. Oh, it says cleaning kit. That's probably boring. What are you? Aqua tabs. Probably boring. This box is kind of a let down. Are you just a storage case that has nothing? Okay, an empty storage case for what? What are we supposed to store? Oh, this is a handgun case. So that would be why it doesn't have anything in it. What are these, just tablets that you put inside water to purify it, I assume? These are just water purification tablets. Boring, maybe there's a saving grace here. Oh, this is just a cleaning solution and a toothbrush and a cloth to clean all of your pew pews or your knives. All right. Boring. Get out of here. I want something exciting. We got one box left. Maybe this box will have some excitement in it. All right. Oh, another box of this. Oh, this one is a knife. That is the stubbiest little knife that I've seen in a long time. I don't even know really what you'd do with that. <laughs> maybe like for skinning something maybe? Fox edge. This is a knife guaranteed. I've got quite a few of these fox edges. Oh, okay. This one actually has got some weight to it. It actually feels pretty decent. Nice. I like that. That's a pretty good one. Some cover scent. Lubricant protectant with earth cover scent. I'll be the judge of that. That doesn't smell like earth. It kind of smells like dirt. A little bit. Maybe they're just talking, maybe it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't have a strong smell. Maybe that's why it's cover scent. Because a lot of this stuff in cans has a super strong smell. This doesn't really have that much, and it smells a little bit like dirt. Camo foam. I assume this is to like wrap around things to hide them. That's boring. Let's see what this is. Survival bow and arrow set. If there's a bow and arrow in here, now I'm excited. What else, is, what else is this? Oh, I have no idea what that is. Okay, get out of here, we don't need you. Okay, before, before I get all excited and open this, let's, let's take a look at this. Because if this is a bow and arrow, I'm not gonna care about anything else. Huh? Oh, high-vis trail markers. Okay. So these are like, as you're going out throughout the woods, you can, jeez. Clips are kind of tight. You like clip this on a, a tree branch or something, and then keep keep going, and you can mark your trail so you can find your way home. If you're someone that gets lost easy, I bet this will this will help. Let's see what this is. Oh, this is a single hammock. Oh, okay. All right. This I am definitely gonna try this out on the second channel whenever it's daylight because it's like two in the morning right now. And on my second channel, which it is linked in the description, we're gonna try this out. Now let's get to this. Oh, it's got the case. Anything in here? Nope. Okay. So far it's half true, at least. We got arrows. And a bow. I think that's it. Okay. So this is a, a long bow. I assume that just goes there. These are some mean arrow, arrow heads. Or broad heads, I mean. 
Wow. I mean, that is, that is pointy. <clears throat> that would really do some damage. Okay, so I think this is pretty straightforward. I assume this is the bow string. I assume this goes like this. That probably goes there. This is gonna be awesome. Easy. Easy peasy. That should go around there. And I should just be able to bend this thing down. Ugh. Put this on here. I've done this before. Once upon a time in my life, back when in the Boy Scouts. Boom. Look at that. Just an old longbow. I wonder what the, uh, I wonder. Excuse me? Oh, something must have just been shifting. I don't know what the draw weight is. It doesn't feel like much. For those of you that don't know, if you've never shot a bow before, you have three different color fletchings and you always put the odd color out. Don't ask me uh, why, that's just how it is. <laughs> I'm just like Robin Hood. Just you, just you wait and see. I have a target. But it's meant for, it's meant for the crossbow. Let's shoot a couple arrows up close. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can hit right in the heart. See that? That's a heart shot. I'm good. Let's do it again. I feel like whenever I'm pulling back and I'm aiming, I feel like the bow is like slightly, I feel like the whole thing's trying to like crank this way and my arrow is not quite lined up. I don't know if that's like a bow problem or if that's a me problem. It doesn't seem like there's like any wrong way to put it together. It's almost like it wants you to like knock your arrows over here on the other side, which wouldn't make any sense. Ha -ha. Now, I might have missed two out of three shots, but the point is I hit the heart. That's all you could ask for. All right, so that's all the battle boxes. I feel like we got, uh, a pretty good selection of things. I feel like almost all of it was useful. Some of it really cool and gonna be lots of fun. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. And a lot of this stuff, I'm probably gonna uh, test deeper on the second channel. So subscribe over there.